Hey everybody, it's Robin with Creativity RV, and I'm here in Lafayette, Louisiana, about to take a swamp tour. If you followed my travels lately, you know that we went down from Las Cruces, New Mexico, all the way down to the Texas coast to Louisiana. We boondocked in Las Cruces. We went to Marfa, Texas. We went to Big Bend National and State Parks. The Terlingua Ghost Town Cemetery got flooded on the beach, took a ferry ride. Then we boondocked for one night at a casino in Louisiana saw a Cajun recreation town, and then went to my favorite stop ever in five years on the road. It was this swamp tour. I'm here with my friend Peggy, and we met a couple of other Harvest Host members, Teresa and Kevin, and we're all about to get on this really cool boat and go through the swamp and see some stuff. I've never been in a climate like this before. This is why I really love traveling, and I especially love Harvest Host because I get to see places like this. So I think we're all about to pile into that thing right there. And I'm a little bit scared, I'm not going to lie. I was wrong, we didn't get in the airboat. We got in one of those boats on the left right there and had the best tour thanks to this guy, our biologist. And I'm a biologist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a natural environment, okay? Not allowed to feed the alligators or the birds or anything like that, and there's no telling what we may see. You could see a hundred alligators, y'all, we could see zero, we just never really know, okay? But what they're actually doing, y'all, is they're actually drying their feathers off. Now, unlike a duck, they have the oil in their feathers, so they actually got to use the wind and the sun to dry their feathers off, yeah? Mm. Now, also because they have no the oil in their feathers, so whenever they swim in the water, y'all, their whole body will actually be underwater. You know, you see their long snake-like neck and all that little right. way. Yeah. And the natives back in the day actually nicknamed them snake birds, because all you would see is their long snake-like neck and all that little water when they be swimming. But the actual name is an Aninga, though, y'all. And uh, I actually found out a while back that Aninga is actually a Spanish word for devil bird. <laughs> Not exactly sure why I mean, you know, but that's what it is. Yeah. Then we set out into this bayou that was so amazing. I've never seen anything like it. There was moss hanging from the trees and there was so much wildlife to take pictures of. And we just kind of meandered through the water and got to see the wildlife. It was not like anything I've ever done before. Oh, babies. Actually gonna be an invasive species though, y'all. It was actually brought to the United States from China back in about 1884. And uh, yeah, on that note, I'll kind of go over the mating and nesting process real real quick though. Eventually the females will venture out and go mate, y'all, unless they take two to tango. Then they'll come back to the nest, they'll dig the nest up, lay their eggs inside and then they're in back. And then the eggs are actually incubated in there for about 57 days, and it could be a little more or a little less, y'all, that I should go around about nothing. And then she will actually have to come back and release the babies because the babies cannot get out on their own. And she has a little biological clock in her head. She knows exactly when to come do that. Wow. Now, once she releases the babies, though, she will actually stay with the babies for about another seven to eight months or until she starts her estrogen cycle again, which at that point in time, she'll pretty much kick all the babies away. Then she'll start the whole nating and nesting process over. Oh. Yes, the ma'am. gator actually cares for their babies. Oh, for yeah, most months? definitely. And then we got really lucky go down because right Jonathan here, spotted too. some gators. My left, y'all's right. I don't either. Where is it? Oh, wow. I see it. We don't wait on. They can be down there for a long time as well, okay? Now, they are also going to be cold blooded as well, though, and they do actually use the sun and the water to regulate their body temperatures. And what they do, y'all, is they have to get out on the logs and the banks and sun whenever they need to warm up. Whenever you see him, you know that's him. That's a dinosaur. Near the end of the tour, they sped up the boat, and we just got to enjoy the sun and the water and hang out together. It was great. Oh, look at that big one. See that guy? It just closes as you come in. This guy is not camera shy. Yeah, we are going to get it in the hard tour. Now, I'm going to get it in the hard tour. Now, I'm going to get it in the hard tour. Now, I'm going to get it in the hard tour. Now, I'm going to get it in the hard tour. Now, I'm going to get it in the hard tour. Now
I never would have seen anything like this if I wasn't a member of Harvest House. It wouldn't even have been on my radar to get off the highway and see something like this. If you're not a member of Harvest House, I do have a link below that will give you 15% off. So check that out if you haven't signed up already. Now my friend and I are headed for New Orleans. So until we see you there, I hope you're all doing well out there. Have happy travels and be free.